Hi, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to episode 95 of the Run the Hills podcast, sponsored by Chee Charge. Chee Charge have been fueling adventures with real food made with real ingredients since 2012. Go and check them out at www.chaycharge.co.uk. I didn't take a breath, Eddie. I didn't take a breath, and then I projected some spit on my computer screen. <laughs> I just have to go silent. It's almost getting so awkward now when you do an introduction. I should perhaps leave the screen. I should take my heart rate before I have to do an intro. <laughs> Gary has to give himself a little countdown. Okay, Pep talk. <laughs> talk. How are you doing? I've, I've enjoyed your Instagram, Eddie. Some uh, glorious photographs. Oh, climb every yeah. mountain. Back, Eddie's getting back. Back again. Yes, at last. She's back. She's hobbling, but she's back. Yes, I did it. I did my biggest week for what three months last week. Five yeah. six biking, and about oh, I didn't actually have a look in the end, but it was about forty miles, almost ten thousand feet um, in the heat wave. Oh dear Lord above! What I'm looking at mid afternoon. What's it? What's the temp? When I go and get the kids on the van, it's so funny because dad and I, people probably do that with the, with their dads too. It's like you have the little things that dads love. Dad loves the temperature gauge on the car. <laughs> and uh, I think I sent one that was like 36.5 at one point. Oh, my goodness. Oh. And Bryn's car is an old banger and the air con doesn't work. And he had to drive it back from Geneva. And he was like, I couldn't even touch the steering wheel. It was so hot. And he oh, arrived wow. back like totally burnt. Yeah. And then so I took another picture for my dad later on in the day to go, it's actually getting hotter. It's now like I was going to do the pickup and it was like eight o'clock at night. And he's like, how have you changed your mileage? Your mileage has totally changed on your van. Oh. And I was like, oh, dad, you're so, only dad would scroll in to check. And, like, yeah. and that light bulb was like, it's been on for a while because uh, if I scroll back, it's in December. <laughs> I was like, dad, it's the car. It's not the van. Don't worry, we're not doing something dodgy. Anyway, yeah, I'm super happy with my progress. Again, like I had a look back at the script last week and I saw I did a, I'm not really looking at what I'm doing. I'm just totally going day by day by feel. Yeah. And I did a two hour run I saw last week and or yesterday totes carried away we've got a big uh it's a one thousand well yeah what was it i climbed 1200 meter hill hill <laughs> massive uh mountain that's just literally behind us um that you can ski on in the winter and you can climb up and i don't often go on it uh it's very um it's cliffs so it's okay. not dog. it's not a good dog mountain basically but it's an awesome mountain i probably climbed it three or four times since we've lived here it's a couple of hours up it's a biggie so i awesome. thought yeah i thought i'll climb up that then i'll come down and then i'll go up a smaller one to the side of it to sort of get a nice day out but anyway it was so we started running and it was so hot that it was like 30 ish degrees in the hills at altitude i was like do you know what i think we're probably better just like power hiking this than trying yeah. to just get as we're going to talk about in a minute getting just so hot and deep. and there's no water on the mountain either so we took we were, you know we took a couple of bottles and then a bottle in our backpack um lovely and then we so we just took the pressure off and just went lovely love a day like that when i don't have anything for a few hours it's very rare oh, magic. And, uh, i didn't even think about um I didn't even, so the week before I'd have to have quite a few breaks because the Achilles and the tendons would get tired. And I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think oh, about it. Oh, that's great news. So the run, which is great. The downhill then is really, we were just talking about what we call technical <laughs> and non-technical running. And I was like, I find, te I count technical running as if you fall, you're in a near death situation. So it's, it's not, um, it's not dangerous. It's not chains, but it's you know little ridges, rocks, kind of bum sliding down off bigger rocks off the top. So we decided, I've only got halfway down. So instead of coming back down, we were going to try the path to go up and over and bring it back round. But it was 850 meters down of basically rock hopping. Uh, both of us with my dodgy, we both have my mate us with dodgy ankles. <laughs> it was a bit like, oh, 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 no, I've gone over and again. <laughs> only went over on it four times. But at the top, it was a bit like the ankle is still a bit wobbly. Yeah. And when you're like precariously balanced on one rock, I was like, oh, I did 
breath. It's gonna get... yeah. But it, got, it gets better. And they, I felt, yeah, I was super happy. It was such a great, almost four hours of like hike, run, chat, snack. Oh, oh it's my dream. What and I, like, I just love being out like you, Gary. With no jet, like, actually, I, I'm not even bothered if I don't run that much. Just being out high. Being out, yeah. With all the chuffs going. Got to stop entering races, Eddie. Then we just go and enjoy these big days. <laughs> I loved it. Of course, then I was disgusting. Came home. Oh, Gary, we're having a bit of a nightmare. Middle child's passport we sent in the middle of March. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. It's still not back. Oh, it's wow. still not back. We've already had to get one temporary passport um, when we went back to England, what was it, a couple of months ago. And now, and we're like, oh, my gosh. So I did something what terrible. What the hell? Why, why is it taking so long? What the hell? What the hell? Okay, I did something I've never done before, Gary. I'm not very good at compl- I would prefer not to complain and do anything. Anyway, I fired off four emails ticking every box to the complaint passport office going where's this where's the passport where's just tell yeah. me where the passport is tell me where it is because what's more the, our mates down the road sent theirs off and it came back within two weeks so i'm like something has happened what like what is this passport yeah. um so and you ring the passport office I, i'm sure there's people listening that have been in the same boat because it seems like uh i think i've heard something on the news actually i think it is a big problem at the moment. yeah you ring the passport office you go through all the things you put in all your numbers so like, yeah, that takes about 10 15 minutes and then they say sorry no one can take your call and they hang up God. on you <laughs> I just want to smash this. <laughs> anyway a long right so i had i'd done this long run i was like i don't have any calls booked you know monday's quite quiet on my coaching books because most people are having rest days or you know i've checked in with everybody on the sunday so right i've got a couple of hours that i can sit now and badger the passport office so um, sitting in my sweaty running kit, just a load of liquid all around my laptop. So I got onto the web chat as well. Nobody's available to help you. Nobody's available. Kept logging on. No one's probably got three people in the build, isn't there? So I got through fourth time of getting going, trying to get through and getting hung up on. Um, so the rage was building like, oh, God's sake. Anyway, I got through to a guy. This is what's happened. Please, can I talk to somebody who can help me? Tell me. Just tell me, when is this passport going to come back? Where is it? It, Can somebody actually know where this passport is? Because if it's been lost, let's just go and read it. We'll probably be able to do it in two weeks. Oh, he's like, I can't help with that. I'll put you through to someone else. I was like, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere. Oh, Gary, I I was so happy because I'm like, okay. (laughs) You know, got this this lady. Okay, she said, oh, it's, it's here. I said, I know. I know it's there. You told me that at the beginning of April. But where is it now? Like I said, we we need the passport we're we're in france we have no we can't get these cards the kids need to prove that they live here because we don't have this passport so we can't travel we i know it's it seems we've but we've got a holiday but we haven't ever we haven't had a holiday yeah it, and like we've got this holiday booked and i have to pay a lot of money of the outstanding balance next week yeah Potentially, this all sounds so like first world problems. So I'm like, if I can't, we can't go, we can't go. Okay, but can you just tell me that you, this passport is being, you know, is there? I can't tell you that. Oh. I was like, okay, well, I need to, you know, it's actually a legal document that I need to have for my child. My child can't travel. Please, can you put me through to your supervisor? I don't have a supervisor. What do you mean? You don't have a supervisor? So I was like, I'm sure there's always a way, Gary. There's always a way, isn't there, that when you ring people, then if you keep badgering people, eventually yeah. they'll pass you on to someone. So I was like, no, no, you must have a boss. Like, put me through to your boss. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I don't want to get cross with you, but I really have to speak to somebody because if this passport is lost, we could still be waiting. I can't um, understand how this person can devalue how important the passport yeah, is. Yeah, I got iced her, of course. I was like, and she's like, she put me on hold. So I was like, she must be talking to her supervisor going, fuck. She's doing Wordle. She's doing... <laughs> she's like she must be talking to somebody saying what shall i do like or oh, Quebec, there's nobody to talk to you i was like no there must be somebody i said there must be somebody in the whole of uk that can talk to me about where this passport is yeah. no there's nobody i said look i'm really sorry to get more angry but what am i supposed to do do i just sit here for another three months with no passport unable to travel i was getting more and more angry she started crying gary Oh, wow, Eddie. I was like, oh, no, no, no. no." I was like, what is happening here? (laughs) I was like, look, I'm really sorry to make you so upset, but please just give me a number. Give me somebody I can talk to the passport office. Do you know what she did? She hung up on me. Oh. That was the end. I was like, that was an hour and a half of my life, and I have still no answer. Where this passport is, nobody can help me, honestly. What? What? (laughs) 
<laughs> what is happening in this country? Just somebody help me. Anyway, of the four emails I sent of the complaints, it says you'll get a reply. I've not had a reply. Like, it's just a disaster. Anyway, Maybe they're just completely you know, swamped. Good old, I think so. Good old daddy on the old, who's, who loves the uh, pictures of the, uh, okay, he was like, I'll sort it out for you. He said, where's the passport? I said, I think it's in Durham. He said, I'll drive up. Oh. I said, no, no, no. Dad loves a call center, a challenge, a refund. I was like, no, no, dad. Anyway, then five minutes later, he'd screenshotted a picture of Durham Cathedral going, I'm almost there. Awesome. I was like, no, dad. I was like, leave it this time. Leave it like a few days. And then he's like, I know that I'll get my MP for Wales on it. I was like, and I've said no, but actually now I'm raging so much that I might just. Anyway, that's nothing about running, but it's important to tell everybody life stories of um, normal life because it's not all running and sunshine. So and if you've got a summer holiday coming up, make sure you get your passport. summer holiday coming up and I can't pat my inflatable unicorn knowing that we might. Bryn just said, should we just leave that one behind? I was like, no, that's the best one. We want to take that one. <laughs> uh, anyway, running wise, I'm really super happy. I've just been, and then I ran again this morning. I wouldn't have run. I wanted to do a Zwift race, but I'm single parenting again. So got the dogs got to take out, but no, very little pain. I'm also using, my mate has lent me, she runs this recovery room in Morzine where people can go and do like have massage and everything that you do. And she has these compression, Norma Tech compression boots. Oh, I've seen these. Are they any good? Are they all a bit rich? Amazing, Gary. They okay. Amazing. So she's lent them. You have to use them. Like, so <laughs> you have to use them. <laughs> <laughs> They've made such a difference because I was getting quite a lot of swelling around the Achilles and the tendon every run. Um we I don't really we don't really know why. It's just a bit angry still. Yeah. But the compression just takes that swelling down. Um, and if you've only got, I probably sit down for about 40 minutes a day of like mm. Netflix, Netflix and chill, put these on oh, and it just fits out. And I do you know what that is? Oh, that, that <laughs> Netflix and chill is a bit, it's a bit rude, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, every day, you know me, Gary. Uh, uh, 40 minutes a day takes the swelling down. Netflix, you don't really want the swelling to go down, I guess, if you're Netflix and chilling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, so, yeah i'm so happy about the running um and i started thinking of been watching i was able to watch a bit of the spine footage which yeah. i couldn't have done. i don't think a week ago i'd have been like i can't but then i was watching it going i could see myself back there see myself like the last month i think i've been thinking i don't think i'll ever be able to you know i haven't even been able to run up my local yeah um, my local everyday climbs and this morning I ran up it just listening to a podcast and I was like progress you get there so, I know lots of people have messaged like on Facebook and stuff with Achilles problems and stuff so it has been a long time but stick to your Alfredson protocol stick with your strength and take it slow and you will get there and uh, I'm thinking of you all so yeah Oh, good in the hood. Right, I've got, well, we're going to move on to you, Gary, because I've gone on about this passport. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've got some, I've had quite a few messages saying, look, the only thing we're really interested in is the drone story. Oh, right. <laughs> no one's, <laughs> you've been getting these messages now. <laughs> Can you ask Gary what happened about the drone? Oh, they, oh, my mate, I was just saying to you before, like, mates message me, go, say hi to Gary. I'm like, oh, hello, hello. <laughs> I can't remember where we left off, part one. What was they were going to send it back to you. <clears throat> oh, oh you so I went to them. I went to pick it up on whatever night it was last week. And so I've got the drone back, but it is completely destroyed. Two two police officers in uh, the Wickham area of uh, uh, Gateshead. Imagine if there was like dodgy stuff on there and like I lost it. And the people that found it were police officers That's who actually know how to access drone footage. So it would be like, oh, God. <laughs> Luckily, just me messing around at Dalton Park on Crimson Beach with the drone. So yeah, I got it back, which is awesome. And I managed to salvage the memory uh, card, but that is it. Something something about salt water and electrics is not a good combination. And any yeah, any moving part I just salt any moving part I just fused. So it was all just locked up. Um but luckily uh DJ DJI sent me a new one out. So I've got a new drone. Nah. <laughs> What a happy ending to this. It did cost me a bit of money, but my goodness me, thank goodness I insured it. If anybody's getting a drone, insure it, your bloody drone. You know, I wouldn't say it's not going to happen again, because to get these cool shots, you got to go and... These... you got to be a risk taker with yeah, your drone, yeah. man. You can't just keep it inside. So watch this space. 
<laughs> it may be just a little bit of practice. Maybe. Yeah, that's what that's what Neil maybe said. Gary, just go on the go on the backfield and play around with it. For, <laughs> don't just take it straight to the cliffs. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so we have a new drone. I'm just anxious to get over, get get somewhere, and get out, get get playing with it again. So yeah, but thanks, yeah, thanks everybody. Um, I did have a chat with a few people when I was at Dome Dales, and the drone came up a few times. It was quite good. <laughs> but my week, what have I done? Well, Father's Day, first of all, that was awesome. Of course, happy Father's Day. My two children really um, spoiled me that day. I, I, I took Rex out, which was nice. Always good to start the day. Came back to homemade waffles. Oh, what's, your, what's your waffle, Joe? What's got, your waffle top? A waffle, waffle maker. Yeah, it's like a, a, <laughs> it's a breville, yeah. but you can take them out and you put waffle irons in there too. Oh, it's really good. What would you, what would you, what's your go to waffle topping? Oh, it would be probably, oh, I'll tell you what it'd be. Greek, like Greek natural yogurt. Yeah, I'm there. Go on. Blueberries. Oh, my goodness, Eddie. Pum pumpkin skids, honey. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I see. I'm a, I'll do that. Yogurt, berries, seed, granola. Yeah, a bit of granola and a bit of honey. Yeah. A bit of crunch. Yeah, I like a bit of crunch. So that was lovely. And then what do we do? Just chilled out there. It was really nice. My son kept making me coffee, so that was awesome. <laughs> Training wise, it was uh, I did two quality sessions, but they were quite reduced because of Durham Dales. Um, so instead, it was like only like a 10 minute threshold run and then five times 1k. So it wasn't like the big 10 minutes and then the 1k sandwiches, it was just the 1k. So that was good. Um, and I've also been doing my strength and condition. I think I mentioned before, I've tried to add some hamstring. Okay. Exercises. Okay. Um, what, so that's what, been good. What we adding? You know what you need to do. Well, they're like a, I suppose it's a, the, the three things I want to do. One is the Nordic crunch. You kind of on your knees really, but with your ankles yeah, yeah. under and then something. Yeah, forward. Yeah. Oh wow. Have you that's, got, that's like the advanced hamstring exercise. You can go a little bit easier than that. Well, I'm doing a hamstring curl, like the reverse hamstring curl. So with, just with bands. So I'm like standing up against the wall, I suppose, then band, and then lifting my leg up and then I can't remember what it's called is it like the ah oh, you're on one leg you balance and then you pivot at the hip and pick a weight up if you want yeah you're and your legs perfect. straight out the back yeah, so perfect. doing a couple because I thought that was two different ways of moving the the hamstring one was like a curl on the um so it's concentric and then I suppose the uh the Nordic one Mm. is the other way mm -hmm. if when i can actually do that um i need somebody with me to do that because i yeah, flipped yeah, the sofa yeah. when i yeah. <laughs> you need george to sit on the sofa yeah, yeah. that's a tricky one to do toot sol isn't it glute bridges bridge... i do yeah on my leg routine i'll do the glute bridges single i'll do lots glute of bridges, glute marches romanian deadlifts single leg romanian deadlifts nordic curl um, I think that's everything that I give for hamstring. <clears throat> we should all be doing that. When I do the single leg stuff, my left hamstring, which is where all the problem is, I get an achy left back, an achy glute, and that's from my knee, um, if I'm feeling issues with that. It's all down the left-hand side, and the level of balance on my left-hand side is not as good as that. Even if I'm brushing my teeth at night, I'll do the minute on each leg, and I literally, I'm saying, Lisa, I've been doing this for about seven years, Lisa, and I still no. can't even do, do a minute on each leg. I'm terrible. I understand how, like, I'm like, when does it even up? Like, why is it, like, terrible on one side? Maybe we're just born like that. I need to test the kids, actually. Yeah. See, uh, use them as an experiment and see how wobbly they are, uh, if they're more wobbly on one side. So when it's the leg workout, that's a leg workout. But on the upper body and the core, I'm just doing like five, ten minutes of that at the end. So I didn't want to add anything extra because then that would just be something extra. I thought if I made the sessions I'm doing already five or ten minutes longer, then there's more chance of me doing it. So <laughs> and that was that. I had a bit of a whinge. Um, do you ever find this? Dog owners dog dog owners um in denial about their dog behavior. Oh yes, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure where to put it. <laughs> was it. I was running with Rex, and, and I know Rex is he's hot and cold with other dogs. He's 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 really good with people. There's no issues. But some dogs he literally loves them, and some dogs he wants to uh kill them. It's like but a, he's on a lead, you know. Totally, yeah. I understand this. <laughs> and I've not trained him, so I you know, so he's he's on a lead. And there's twice I've met this guy, and his dog is all over Rex quite aggressively. Ooh. He's like reacting as if like, oh, he's never done that before. And, and you're like, like, uh... He did. Last time I saw you, he did exactly the same thing. 
I'm just like, it's not dogs. I've not got an issue with dogs. It's I'm, scary I'm, if he's attached, if he's on like a wasted lee as well to you. Oh, yeah, I've got to get in between these dogs. I've got, I oh, could, yeah, Lord. yeah, it's quite scary. It's been a couple of times, actually. Our German Shepherd bit me once, which wasn't great. When I see other dogs coming, like, because where we live, it's the same dogs, you know, you know where all the dogs, probably the same with you. Like, it's yeah. the same dog, like, you see the same dogs and you know the dogs that you're like, ooh. If their dog is on the lead, I put my dogs on the lead. And like, well, you know, because often if people put their dogs on the lead, it means you, their dog does not want to say hello. If yeah. their dogs are off the lead, it's a kind of like, but nearly was I'm running, so we move quite quite fast. Yeah. Lindy and Taki, um, Taki's got a bit grumpy in her old age. If a dog, she doesn't like a dog, especially, well, I kind of feel that sometimes the in the holidays when tourists come and they bring these tiny little dogs that they pick up. When we yeah. see when nine dogs are coming, and I'm like, no, I'd love a dog I could pick up. Pick them up, and then they like hold them up, and I'm like, oh my god, that's like a free free bait for Lindy and Taki to yeah. go. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there. Had a few incidents like that. Also, sometimes I'm not expecting them. And anyway, my dogs are very friendly. They're not aggressive, but if they see if they see another runner coming, they're like, mm, it's up, buddy. Hi, hi. <laughs> And I, I try and get, they're quite good. The recall's good occasionally, not so great if I'm not expecting it or I'm listening to my music too loud. So I wouldn't say my dogs are perfect, but they're not aggressive. Uh, Lindy will over greet everybody, but she's kind of really cute. So most people are like, oh, hi, cute dog. We're very dumb. Like it's, it's just the denial. It was like, oh. Yeah. And then I say, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry if the people are like, but I should do more training with the dogs, but I'm also like, kind of like them being a bit. Um, <laughs> Feral. Yeah, I'm not a dog. Uh, I don't think Rex, yeah, Rex is not going to be uh, trained. It's not it's pretty good, but <laughs> I could do better. But then what else do we do? We had Durham Dales, actually. Yeah, race. Oh, sorry. Really yes, of course. Tell, tell us all. It was good, actually. I stayed with Neil all the way, so that was good. We reunited for five hours on the... We <laughs> reunited. Yeah, <laughs> on the trails. I enjoyed it. It was my slowest Durham Dales that I've ever done, uh, I think. <clears throat> How many times have you done it? It's either three or four. I'm not 100% sure, actually, because yeah, it was literally well, no one's done it for about three years. So, oh, um, okay. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the slowest one, but it was not about that. You know, there's no point in racing. And then the goal is to have a good run out and then run again on Sunday. And what I'll, I'll go on to the negatives <laughs> soon, <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the positives are I tired on Sunday, obviously. You got a big day out, but I had no doms again, which was a big fear going into the late 100. That was the thing that got me. I kind of got event doms, really, I suppose, from uh, after Mardale onwards. I had so much discomfort in my quads that I really found it hard to do anything other than a walk. So again, I was quite pleased that I've had a good day out and I was literally zero. Like I say, I was fatigued, but no doms, and I think I did about six or seven miles with Rex, nice and easy miles. But yeah, I had this 24 hour sub 24 hour goal, which I just plucked out. <clears throat> There's no why to it apart from just I want a sub 24. Sounds cool. Chicks digs. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm based on Swaledale and Durham Dales. I'm just a little bit um unsure if it's a bit beyond me at the moment we'll see come in the cup that's way and the reason why both of those races um if i kept that level of effort then i really think i, I well i couldn't sustain that level of effort for one and Durham deals at the end of it i got myself I, it wasn't really particularly hard effort as such I, Again, I wouldn't have done that for 100 miles, no way. But got myself severely dehydrated, which I didn't really think I was at the time. Um, and then I had a bit of blood in my way afterwards. So I'm thinking, well, I'm, you know, not really firing on sales in that Durham Dales. And I've come out of a 30-mile race weighing blood. How am I going to fare <laughs> on the Lakeland 100, which could be another roast and hot day. So I'm a bit... Yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit kind of so drinking. You're practicing your race fueling and hydration. Oh, well, that was, yeah, obviously. Obviously, not because not. you're so dehydrated, which is. Well, a big yeah, you know, I, before I started, I had a big, um, must have been nearly two liters of the uh, precision hydration, the 1500. So that was before I'd even started. Then I had a liter of drink on me. And then when I got to Middleton Teasdale, I was going to top it up again. But I had a, see, normally I've said loads of this podcast, I wee every five minutes. I had one wee in the first 15 miles and it wasn't the best of colours um, but I just thought okay stupidly I kind of thought well it's quite nice I'm not stopping for a wee every five minutes but then obviously that wasn't a good sign and then yeah I did kind of re rehydrate more than I'd planned to the second half uh, but again I wasn't weeing much maybe had one or two the second half and I 
I, yeah, I wasn't really aware I was overly dehydrated, to be honest, until I got to the end and I went to the toilet and it was like, oh, it was like, um, like you drank the beetroot those. shots. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bit worried that at that level of effort on that, on that weather combination that I, my body really didn't cope that well, how's that going to pan out on the Lake 100? be super on top of your nutrition yeah. and, and your hydration and if it is super hot you're gonna have to just slow down Gary. yeah it's so easy to talk about like oh this is good i've done this race i've done sub three whatever and when things are going well but it is a real it was an eye over for me that happened to kind of blood in my ear and i've never had that in the past so yeah go keep an eye on that out I've had it low, don't worry about it it's fine <laughs> well i googled it immediately and i was like oh my goodness but as soon as i could get wi-fi i was like shit what is going on and luckily it, it, um it's, as soon very as common. it's really common in running it can be it can be impact it can be impact yeah yeah i've heard that yeah it can be yeah dehydration it can be a bladder infection it can be all sorts of, i mean obviously it's a big warning sign that you need to seek medical attention but, but i wonder if it was a whole because uh, also poor neil was downwind of me for about three hours of the race and i'm not too sure if it was the heat anytime i ate any uh i was i think i had uh some cheese charge flapjack and i had kendo mint cake and the kendo mint cake which is pretty much raw sugar um that really just sent my tummy into turmoil and yeah, Neil was getting it for about three, <laughs> three, three hours. So I'm not too sure it was like everything. It was just yeah, not, nothing was quite right there. Um, um, but but go again, St. Cuthbert's, and I've really got to be mindful. I'm not too sure I'm going to do this because it's not the same elevation, the distance profile as the Lake 100. So it's quite tricky to replicate that. But I really want to rein it in the effort and just to see what that does as far as what to hear, what time I come in, you know, if the pace is, I think the Lake 100 for 24 hour pace is 13 and a half minute mile in average over the whole course. So maybe then on St. Cuthbert's Way, say 12 and a half minute mile in will be equivalent you know effort. You can work that like with the feet meters climbed per yeah. mile on St. Cuthbert's Way, you can work that out. <laughs> I, yeah, when I clients do that, I'm like, you can you work that out for me? Because I, I don't do any of that. Keep the effort down a little bit, rein that in a bit, bit, and hopefully just see how that pans out over the the 45 miles. Your 45 miles is still a decent distance. So if I get in the late 100, if I could, I'll kind of compare that to say maybe getting to Delmain, um, roughly halfway there. And if I'm feeling like I could kind of keep going on to uh, single, uh, oh, well, what's the what's the Holy Island, then I'll feel a lot better. But currently. Yeah, sub-24. <clears throat> I'm not too sure. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, we had some people running sub-24 on the West Highland Way. We call yeah, it the yeah. Ultra West Highland Way because we're talking to the Ultra guy next week. So let's give him a shout out before we start. Uh, I had a couple of clients doing this. Nicola Dawson, she put on our Facebook page. And uh, she had a, a, a good <clears throat> race, the first 100 miles. So uh, she finished. She was super happy. Tough, tough last uh, last bit, which is often the case in the first 100 mile. Yeah. Way before. You're so and it's a fast one, isn't it? So it's, a, it's a so different to see something like the late 100. Mm, the elevation the first, the first bit it's a it's a mixture it's a real mixture that west highland way and the crewing and everything it's quite logistical planning you can't just turn up as you can with um some other hundred milers rowan boswood won it in 15 hours nine minutes first finished up Whew. fast and lynn allen with a pb of 18 46 ninth place 19th place overall i think it was hot i think it was hot um well done well done everyone who did west highland midges midges or let's not it's been good um, over the weekend watching the spine challenge unfold. And also, as we speak, the spine, summer spine is going on. So we can't give any results for the summer spine. That'll be next week. But yeah, in the spine challenge, Lauren Johnson took the win for the ladies in 30 hours, 4 minutes, 31 seconds. And it was great to see Emma Rope, a previous guest on the show, came in third. And another previous guest, too, Hannah Basley, completed the race, too. Awesome going, everybody. And um I'm not too sure if I mentioned it, but did I tell you I helped on Joe Meek on her Bob Graham round? Joe oh, Meek, the international GB trail runner. <laughs> Stop That's, <exactly. laughs> That's the one. Well, did Tom Piggott. Did you bother her or did you help her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't bother anybody. <laughs> but yeah, Tom Piggott, um, he's good. when I saw his, when he, um, I saw he'd won the race. His my uh, spidey senses went. I thought, oh, goodness me, I recognise that name. And he last time I saw Tom, Tim, sorry, 
was <laughs> oh, I should start again no I love it okay. <laughs> and Tim was, Tim, not was Tom. that uh Wasdale head and he literally had run like one two and three with Joe on her Bob Graham round the last time I saw him he was actually he's I'm pretty sure he's a physio that's his day job and he was given uh jaw some treatment before she set off on a leg what, after so, doing leg one two and three yeah 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 <laughs> and i think that was his last total different terrain you know that um leg one two three of the bob graham it was probably maybe his last big big day out um before the spine challenger but yeah 23 hours and six minutes and 47 seconds well done tim record breaking both record breaking challenger times weren't they course records i think oh awesome another shoe or, or a kit show this week eddie i do like these ones um lee and bordale from innovate joined us for a chat about some shoes from the innovate range and they came to us live from there is it the hub or the forge or whatever it is over in stavely but they've got a lovely cool place, cool place. Oh, yeah. yeah i you know i've drove past it a few times and i just think i need to Need you need to pop in and knock on the door and say it's Gary. It's Gary, Gary from the podcast. The podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was awesome. And I learned a few things from uh, our chat. So yeah, I hope you do too. deal to the show how are you where are you and have you both been for a run today <laughs> hi yeah um no i haven't been for a run today i'm actually just back up from a holiday with a family holiday in Mallorca. so i literally unpacked and last the night. slight tan i thought yeah. <laughs> like, gosh, this is lake district fells really? yeah. so yeah we're in stavely in the lake district um in our hq office um, you in for run today? I've got my stuff for a lunch. Oh, a lunch break. <laughs> uh, I bet if they are like, take, are they like, take an extra long lunch break, get out for your run? Yeah, that's definitely company policy. We get an extra long lunch break so that we get to go for a run. I can't really remember last time I've been head torch running during the week. When the shoes need testing as well, it's always like, right, who wants to go for a run and stuff? So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's not oh, a job. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Oh, Gary, <laughs> Gary's licking his lips, going, oh, "I could move there. I could move the family." Yeah. Well, I keep when I drive the lakes. There's quite a few times I'll drive past the sign for your Innovate Centre, and you know I'm guilty. I've not took a right hand turn and headed up there. I should do one day. It looks awesome. It's like a shipping containers, and is that is that right? Uh, well, it's on. It's so, so our headquarters is on there, the mill yard in Staveley. So um, it's a really like um, popular. <laughs> It, 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 it's, there's a huge car park for a start but then you've got lots of businesses built in within this old mill yard so there's ourselves and um, some other running and outdoors brands are here as well as um, wheelbase which is the uk's largest cycling um store and um, artisan bakeries hawkshead brewery next door oh. which is uh oh, need to very, leave. it's tempting not to stray into there every evening when you leave work <laughs> um yeah, it's, it's a fantastic place, and we've got amazing trails and fells out the back back door. So it is literally, I know, I know it might sound cheesy, but it is true. We we all have our running shoes here; they're all at the door, and we all we all run. So, is it a place where people can come and try shoes? Is it a shop as well? Sorry for my ignorance. I don't no, live no. in England, so yeah, I don't. That's okay. No, we have a, we have an office. So our, our our head office is here, and about a year ago, a year ago this month actually, we opened a store next door, and it's called the Forge because we were forged in the fells, as you can see in the right and above. So it's called The Forge, and that's in Stavely. And um, we have all our full ranges in there. Um, it's, it's like a brand store, basically. Um, it's a really nice place to come and check out Innovate stuff, have a chat to people. We have some, um, we've set up some routes from the store as well. So you can, for a one pound donation to Martin Rescue, you get a map and it's got um, uh, controls all around the hills and trails here. And you can go for either two, three, I think it's four or six hours and it's all virtual you're gonna say just miles you <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's all done off, it's all done off your phone you download an app and when you when you get to certain checkpoints your phone pings tells you you've got it you get those points you move on to the next one awesome. and it, it's really cool so we've had lots of people come in and try and see it's, it's like it's virtual or, orienteering um hugely popular 
That's oh, cool. <laughs> um, and, and a really good thing to hear because I know loads of people struggle, especially in the last year as well, when um, people's activity levels have changed, um, finding a trainer that fits, they order endless ones off the internet. And then as soon as you wear them outside, you can't return them. And you're not sure what trainer's right for what and different companies bringing out an array of trainers. So to be able to actually go somewhere, try someone on and speak to somebody that hasn't just, you know, come out of school and is working at a Saturday job, a uh, trainer shop, but is actually like passionate and knows every detail and isn't going to let you walk out of that shop with a shoe that's not right for you is worth the trip, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I've, absolutely. You know, I only exper experienced staff who work in there, um, runners, and like I say, we are, we're next door, so we've got a team of, uh, when, when we're all in, there's probably 20 odd people in the office yeah. um, and, you know, majority of them are runners who've got vast array of experience over various terrains races so yeah we're more than happy to help people find the right shoe for their feet how long has it been open for now uh, a year a year a year this month <laughs> oh, that's quite so, brave yeah. in the pandemic to open a open it, up it was, <laughs> yeah it was it was very brave um it's the first one we've ever done obviously we're in we're in many many retail shops yeah. um you know throughout yeah. the uk um but it's the first time we've opened our own brand store um, so it's just obviously purely innovate stuff. Um, yeah, but it's been it's been a it's been more successful than we thought it would be. So we're really happy with how the first year's gone. Brilliant. Could we talk about the? Uh, I've seen it quite a lot on social media. The new park law shoe that really looks exciting. It it's, it seems a bit of a like a bit of a hybrid shoe from right, like from a like a road to trail. It's not just an outright road shoe or a trail shoe. I saw the pictures of it and I thought, well, oh, yeah, I really like the look of that. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let I'll let I'll let Bob Deal talk you through. But yeah, basically, you're right. You're right on the money there. It's a road to trail shoe. Obviously, across that we've got we've got a large range of shoes which cover various terrains from you know your soft muddy ground through to your hard rocky trails. Um, and then we, even within those, we break it down a little bit further to really get quite specific as to what you're looking for. Yeah. And then you've got things like fits and weights. But this shoe, yeah, it's, it's a first, we have done it before, but it's the first time, we've, I, guess, I guess the first time we've really, you might say, you know, marketed it. Um, and, you know, road to trail, the idea of having a shoe for adventure from the door where you feel like, you know, you've got a lot of shoes and you can't decide what to do. I might, I'm going to run some road and I'm going to hit the trails. Yeah. I don't know what I want. This, this is the shoe. This is a shoe for that, that 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 road to trail progression. Yeah, but I mean, Bordeaux will tell you much more about it. So um, I think what was really unique about this shoe is actually that we designed the outsole to be like that best of both worlds. Okay. So most uh, road running shoes and trail running shoes, they have different like qualities, but um, they're actually not necessarily conflicting. So on trails, obviously you want cleats um, to build some grip. Yeah. And um, what our designer um, has done here is that he's done just under 100, 98 actually, <laughs> of like small cleats that give you a really balanced and smooth ride. If you have only a couple of cleats, it doesn't feel as like smooth when you're going transitioning for your gait. Yeah. So um, that gives you both grip, but also like comfort on the trails. And then when you go into the midsole, um, we've done an eight millimeter drop because on the road, you often want a little bit more than on really technical terrain, yeah. but still eight mil is not yeah. a lot for a road shoe. So it's kind of like, again, a balance between road and uh, trail. And then in the materials, we've put the new G-Fly uh, material in the midsole and we made it slightly softer because um, like road running shoes, you often want quite a comfy feel because you're on like a really hard surface, yeah. but you still want it to be stable when you're on trails. Um, so again, like nice balance. By the way, outsole also graphene grip means yeah. that it doesn't wear too down too quickly on tarmac. You still have yeah, because that's what I was thinking. Was like I've had these um, hybrid shoes before, and the, if you run, you know, uh, any sort of distance on the road, that that grip goes very quickly. Yes. Um, so that's also why we have so many cleats. It will distribute the pressure better, um, and then the graphene makes the rubber more long lasting as well. And what's that? There's a channel that runs down the middle there. What, 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 what is that for? Um, so basically you can see the midsole on there and it gives you like a good transition. So this is basically, if you're a heel striker, that would be where you're first hitting yeah. and it, it just helps you transition to your forefoot. There's also a flex goes across the other way, isn't there? Yeah, so um, also, I think you can just about see it. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, cool. 
Um, that's like the Metaflex, and it means that if I take the shoe stuffer out, um, that when you're actually flexing your shoe, you always want it to flex there because that's where your foot can flex. You don't want it to flex there. So that's why we put like a slight groove in, in the sole to make sure that your, your shoe will flex where your foot will flex as well. Yeah. All of our shoes are kind of designed with that kind with that philosophy in mind so that it works the same as your foot will want to work so it doesn't tell your foot move like this but yeah. your foot tells the shoe i want to move like this so it's kind of like natural performance i would say so it's not barefoot it's just natural yeah. in terms of how it works how, cool is the, how, how, what's the ankle like? It looks quite solid in your hand, the sort of ankle part of the trainer. Yeah. Um, we always do soft ankles. Okay, good. Yeah. So um, we kind of do that because otherwise you might get quite a lot of aggravation in your Achilles. I know some people who might have found Innovate like years and years ago and they're like, I can only wear your trainers because otherwise I get Achilles tendon like inflamed. So actually, like you say, it looks solid yeah it, it does yeah. Poor, don't get me yeah. wrong but it's still it's still soft and it won't give you any blisters because it's not it's not forcing your your um ankle in a certain way it just you can just run the way that yeah um your body wants to run and you see that well, with like a, a softer sole than maybe on the 300s you, you'd, you'd notice that I think you I think you do um it's just kind of like to give that extra sort of comfort on you if you're on really hard packed trails you've done the West Highland way haven't you Badil a good uh, shoe yeah. for that sort of flat pack trail um where you're also looking for some grip at some points yes um I actually I think I would be really struggling to decide between these two there's not that much road in um uh yeah that, I'll bring sorry yeah that's the tra trail fly g300 max so um, because the West Highland Way depends on how, over how many days you would do it, but I kind of ran about 50K a day, so about 30 miles a day, yeah. which then means I would probably go for a Trail Flight Ultra Max because it's just got that a little bit more cushioning. And I found that there wasn't that much road on the trail. No. Um, so that would, be, that would be perfect for me. And this one is actually what I would take if I'm going on holiday because I will probably be running from my apartment yeah. on the um, on the tarmac, trying to find some trails, do a lot of like traveling for work as well. Again, from your hotel, going, running somewhere, trying to find some mountains and hills. And this would be the perfect shoe and it looks good too. This is, that's this that's is such a good way to advertise something because going on holiday, especially now EasyJet are charging you to check in a bag. I'm <laughs> outraged about that. I'm like, yeah, but I need three pairs of trainers. But to be able to just take one where you know, because it's a silly thing. It's a first world problem, isn't it? That if you, lots of people that do travel and want to carry on training, but they don't know what terrain they're going to be on. But if they've got something that they can use for both is a big, um, it makes the investment a little bit more worthwhile. Didn't I take my trail flies to Scotland and try to run off? Arthur C in them. These would have been no, ideal. You took your Nike vapor zooms to Scotland and went up there. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad, bad mistake. <laughs> I think it's awesome. You know, my day consists of maybe half a mile of tarmac, and then depending on the run I choose to go to work, it's it's on trail and then back on tarmac again. And also depending on the weather. A lot of the time, the, the, a road shoe will be fine, but if it's been raining, for example, then my trails are uh, not so good for, for a road shoe. So that sounds like an awesome, um, like you say, go-to shoe. What, what we're looking at weight-wise on that? Um, this one is a size eight and a, in in around a size eight and a half, about 280 grams. Okay, so a little bit lighter. Yeah, than the... yeah. Is there a difference between a male model and a female model? So um, at the moment, what we do with our um, fits is actually we offer different fits and different shoes. So if you go on our website, you can see a fit scale from one to five, yeah. five being the widest, one being the narrowest. Um, and if you, um, if you want to buy a men's shoe, it'd be the same as a women's shoe in the same size. And the reason why we do that is because actually men and women both can have narrow wide feet. And I spoke at length with podiatrists about this, but actually, if you look at the sort of normal distribution of everyone's feet, um, it would 
the, the normal brands would actually say women's feet are narrower, men's feet are wider. And I think some women buy the men's shoes because they're wider. No, you can just buy the women's shoes. Just make sure you get a fit four or five because that's quite on the wide scale. And you can just get the color you actually like. <laughs> I never even think about the color of a trainer. It has no, because it's just going to be covered in mud anyway. Really? Well, we, we get, it's probably one of the hottest topics um, in our office, on our social media. We, we launch a new shoe and yeah, I mean, we please a lot of people, but we there's also, you know, yeah. <laughs> we don't, can't please everybody, unfortunately. Um, that is a yeah, vibrant really yellow, that topic. Art Claw. You've gone big. You're not, you, you're going to, people are going to love it. Or oh, it's a bit of a Marmite color, isn't it? This, well, this has been that's, very, very popular at launch, but we've got a couple of other colors. Um, that's the um, best, that's the best selling color so far. That's, that's, yeah. awesome. that's, that's another one, isn't it? That was yeah. another launch. And we also yeah. have a, that's a, a blue teal and we also have a black, black, white. I haven't got it with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, yeah. And so, I mean, we only launched it, uh, which right back on the holiday, 7th of April. Yeah. 7th yeah. of April. It's so, really it's, it's really fresh and yeah, selling really well to start with. And we've got a nice campaign around it. So yeah, it's, it's it really, it's our first launch of the first running shoe launch of the year as well. So we're really pleased with how it's going. A lot of chats here, maybe about see if there's a race like a Lakeland 100 coming up and the shoe choice chatter before that just goes <laughs> off, off the chart. It gives um, me anxiety just looking at the chatter of people like two weeks ago still haven't decided their trainer choice. The same in the office. We have the same conversations. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and often not everybody wears the same shoes. So. Well, I'm, I'm still just, I'm fortunate enough, I did the Bob Green round last year. Um, and I'm still, I bought so many shoes in the build-up to the Bob Graham round for every possible weather scenario. And I think I'm still just opening the boxes now this year, uh, <laughs> going through them. But yeah, if we're going to go back to the late and under or something like that, that kind of classic Lakeland event where, you know, it's quite a hard packed trail for a lot of it, but there are some sections, if, it, if the weather's not been great, where you're going to be slipping and sliding, I suppose. Um, I'm trying to, I'm blanking on the name. There's a section as you're going into Braithwaite um and yeah I just remember oh, I said butter me I'm like yeah butter me to <laughs> Braithwaite and that can be quite slippery I've chatted with Eddie quite often there's never one shoe that would do every scenario you're gonna there's, there's always gonna be a compromise but yeah from your point of view from the like innovate range asking for a friend um <laughs> what, would be, <laughs> what would be a good <laughs> little hundred shoe <laughs> I haven't, but I actually I did the Lakes Traverse a couple of weeks ago, like two oh, weeks wow. ago. Yeah, well and, um, I had the same kind of like issue as like Lake District. It actually it gets really um rocky and steep near the end, um, like scrambly almost. And there's plenty of like muddy sections too, but then in the start, it's pretty smooth and flat. Yeah. So I think it was only like 30k in before you hit your first hill. And I ended up going for the Trailfly Ultra Max, actually. Um, and that is because even though it only has four millimeter cleats, I say only like for Innovate, that's maybe fairly shallow, but for yeah. other brands, that's all they do ever. Um, I found that, you know, these grooves here, they give me extra grip on the mud because it yeah. makes they make the cleats actually deeper than they are. So I find that this actually grips surprisingly well in the mud, more so than how we designed it, I would say. And um, what I really like about this is if I go on uneven terrain, you know, like all of those rocks and stuff, yeah. I, these um, these flex grooves mean that the shoe adapts and molds to the terrain. Yeah. And I find that I can still go over all this like rough stuff, Interesting. Um, even with like a cushion shoe. Um, and also because they're really wide fit, I've got duck feet. I mean, <laughs> I have to kind of, <laughs> you know, like, and you're going for a long time, your feet are going to swell. So you want something really, really wide. Um, I know yeah. I did. What's that, what's what's that you're on. holding up? What's that shoe you're holding up? Sorry, I didn't hear you when you said at the beginning. Um, it's it is the Trailfly Ultra G300. Trailfly Ultra. So, so I might, if I if I interject slightly, there's all, there's almost like two options really. That's that's one option, and then this. But there's a reason this is a really muddy shoe. I'll explain that in a minute. So this is the this is the right where they go. That that's the other option. 
So this is the that's the one I've got here, is it? Yes, that's right. So it was called the Terra Ultra G270, and we recently renamed it the Trailfly G270. So these two obviously, these are our two two Trailfly shoes. Okay. So this one obviously has got a deeper a deeper cushion in, uh, more drop. It's got a bit more comfort under your feet. What's it, the drop on that one, Lee? Uh, six millimeters six because this one's zero isn't it it's not yeah. Zero. yeah yeah it's just a bit more of a a robust a bit more stable shoe you know you, it's it's it, it's for real long distances um and then you've got this is like the almost like the the, the stripped down speedier version of it so and the reason this is dirty is because dame this is actually damien hall's shoe uh, i'm sure you Stop know. It. well yeah, i was gonna say yeah i've seen damien hall crushing it in those shoes yeah so. so this is a shoey war to run the coast to coast so from St. beast robin hood's bay 185 miles yeah. and he's actually brought he brought his time and stuff on the show oh what a show off but, but mean, what, I'm uh, trying, what, what I'm, saying, I'm trying to say is that this is a, this is another option if you if if you if this is really popular shoe mm. with zero drop so mm. it, your foot feels quite close to the ground, yeah. but it feels really fast, and it's got mm -hmm. lots of it's got plenty of protection with a nice springy midsole in it, and, a, and an incredible this outsole is incredibly grippy. Yeah. Um, which it, it just depends if you want how, how you want to feel within a shoe. This is your sort of your you're more lower to the ground, your faster feel, whereas mm. this is a bit further off the ground, a bit more supportive, a bit more comfort underfoot. Yeah. Um those this will be the two slow options. Like <laughs> That's no, not that. true. That's not true. <laughs> We've heard that before. <laughs> is there any, um, Badil, you might be able to answer this. Is there anything about um, when I wore this shoe that you kindly sent to me? Um, I felt that my foot was having to wear work a lot harder. I normally wear a more cushion shoe with a bigger drop. I felt my foot was actually had got a bit lazy um, and um, and I wasn't used to working as hard. Would you say that um, you need your foot strength is quite important to be able to wear a shoe like that with zero drop, zero drop? Um, and if you ha haven't got strong feet, you should work on your foot strength, basically. So, yes. Yeah. If never. If you've always wore a protective shoes, lots of cushioning and lots of drop. It Not will take you a little I'm bit of time. talking about another brand we know dearly that provide a lot of cushioning that people love because they're so comfortable, but I wonder if their foot becomes, <laughs> Gary, I'm allowed to say that, aren't I? Their foot becomes a bit lazy in them some, sometimes because the innovate yeah. the sort of, because of this twisting motion that the trainer allows you to do, your foot in a more cushioned shoe, your foot doesn't naturally do that over every single bit of terrain, does it? Yeah, so your foot is really, really amazing. I think it's got 26 bones and like 35 different joints. And it is really optimally adapt to, adapting to all these different terrains and to propel you forward. And actually you do want to train your feet. You want them to be strong and then you want them to keep you injury free. And for me, there's a there's sometimes a difference between, you know, on my everyday run, I would want to do that training on my feet. Mm. And if I'm doing my ultra long challenge, um, then maybe I want a little bit more protection. And, we, you know, in our range, we have different shoes for that. Um, and there's lots of personal preference as well. Some people just always have had strong feet and can probably run a coast to coast mm. in um in less protection um but it yeah that really really depends but i would say that if you want to work on your you know long-term injury prevention then make sure that you're strong it's yeah. really really important there's not there's a lot you know there's a lot there's a lot of shoes in the market which are very and probably might come onto carbon plates i guess but you know they're ve that are very stiff and they don't really work with the foot as it was intended Whereas, you know, you, you pick up a pair of Innovate shoes and you say that, you know, flexible, light, natural, yeah. without, not, not barefoot, but, you know, a natural performance element to it. And, you know, that, that is our philosophy. That's our idea is not to restrict the foot. Well, yeah, the first thing I would do things. is when I go and look, when I used to go to shoe shops before I lived in the middle of nowhere, was I used to bend the shoe, check the shoe did that. Mm. And then I choose to check, so I'm bending it in half, and then I used to press down the heel. And if mm. it didn't do that, I mean, obviously, with a new shoe, there's slightly less, then I would be very cautious about putting it on my foot or even my kids' feet as well. That mm. yeah. without that 
natural bit of movement. Um, and I just thought from wearing that, I realized how lazy my feet had got from wearing, going for comfort over a slightly better grip. The 270, it's an awesome shoe, I've got to say. I think I'm on my third pair of them now, out, out of the box, laced up, and off you go. And I like that zero drop. I feel really, it was immediate. I just felt like I had some, my legs were turning over faster. I just had a bit of zip. The 270 felt um, really like, I'm only a six and a half, so probably I'm not too sure they might even weigh slightly less than uh, 270 grams. Yeah, I think it's an awesome shoe. Third pair, would I wear them on the Lake and 100 though? That's, I'm just thinking that last 80 miles when, my, when everything's aching. Yeah. <laughs> would I? I think there is, there is one, there's another option as well, which, but they, this would depend on the weather, but you will see people wearing this for Lakeland 50, Lakeland 100, and yeah. things like Bob Graham rounds, well, especially this shoe. So, oh, the X Talon, yeah. So this is the new Cross Talon Ultra. Yeah. So it's, again, it's designed with distance in mind. So it's got a nice wide toe box. It's got a uh, power flow midsole with nice spongy in there, gives you lots of kick as well and response as you go through your gear. But obviously the big difference is that it's got the you see that eight oh, millimeter like seven or eight isn't it yeah wow yeah, so those eight. are like real mud gripping lugs so so obviously if, if you're if you're going to be doing something like lake 100 lake 150 on a on a you know the weather's pretty rough and it's yeah. going to be a bit slippery and a bit boggy then you know this is a great option because it's still i've, I've done loads of running this year now and it still rides it's surprising people as to how nice it rides on harder trails, even, you know, sections of road yeah. as well. You know, people used to talk about wearing like running shoes that were like football boots and you used to run down the road and be like clatter, 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 clatter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the shoes aren't designed like that anymore. They, you know, they're designed in a way that they can be versatile yeah. because, you know, it's pretty rare that unless you're going and setting off and doing a really specific five mile boggy, muddy run, then you, yeah. you know exactly what you want. I think it comes back to what we discussed before. You, you want your shoes to be versatile and to, tick quite a few boxes and you know something we try and do with ours would you say that one is a good one lee for a sort of spine on the pennine way so yeah well damien wore these to I know, I know he didn't finish we was in the lead but he didn't finish the spine race this year unfortunately he got he got a long way before before a few issues but he was wearing this was his shoe of choice for that it's just yeah it's it's a great great all-round shoe for anything for for long distances when this when when you might be encountering some softer yeah. muddy ground softer. So, what's, the, what's the drop on that one lee I'm gonna, eight I'm mil. Gonna, but, but deals better than me on all these things <laughs> um yeah so eight mil okay so that is a that is a that's a great um that's a great option for the longer yeah, yeah. i'd be i'd be nervous to wear a zero drop for an ultra for anything longer than I yeah, probably use those more. Like I've got some mud claws, and they sit only sit in the cupboard until I know I really I'm going to need these uh, today. But I can see probably those uh, cross tail on there. I think I probably would take them with me more. Gary was hoping that you were going to be bringing out a carbon range in this debate because he's always looking at ways to skive off training and uh, get free speed. <laughs> free speed. <laughs> free speed. Yeah, I do love a carbon shoe. Uh, and up. who is it? Who is it that's just bringing out a carbon trail? Is it Salomon of just? brought out something uh, with... sorry no not in a bit uh north face they've got north face just brought out something yep. with a bit of carbon in uh i personally can't imagine anything worse than running i do have a carbon plated road shoe well with a bit of carbon in i'm not sure i'm not it's not a supersonic one and it is not lovely to run on the road especially as i only run on the road about once a year but it is lovely to feel that ping back in the legs but i can't imagine anything worse than being on the trails with that hard sole underneath because your foot you very rarely you'll know more about this than me obviously but you never plant your like on the road it's easy you manage your, your the, the where you plant your feet down is pretty similar every time but the trail it's it's different so i'm not really sure how how a carbon plated shoe would fit in that environment the thing with the carbon plates as well is like um they are really tuned to exactly your body weight and how you land and the hardness of the terrain underneath and if you get your your timing wrong on the carbon plates they're not helping i mean it, it will just be a good midsole material that gives you the, the springy feel then yeah. so if you're going to look at trail running i think you will be changing your cadence. Anyone who's trying to run to a certain cadence on trails is like, oh dear, it's going all out of the window, isn't it? <laughs> so like, it won't, it won't help you that much. 
And at the same time, we were talking earlier about how your shoes need to be flexible in order to, to help your feet stay healthy and injury free long term. And with a carbon plate, you will automatically have a, a very stiff shoe, uh, which kind of goes against our philosophy. Yeah. Um, on top of that, I also know that like carbon is actually quite unsustainable. Uh, so you're putting something inside a shoe that doesn't really degrade. Um, I mean, carbon bikes is like one of the worst things for the environment. I know that they're really, really oh, light. Goodness. They're not very durable in terms of like compared to the other materials. And um, so it's another reason um, I mean, not to do it. You look at you look at these carbon super powered road shoes that they call them. They don't last very long either, do they? No. <laughs> you know, it's become an almost a culture. I see it on social media, friends, people, you know, you wear these, I won't, I won't name brands, but you know, super fly shoes that, you know, they went in for two, three races, then yeah, yeah. in them and it's awful. It's like, it's, the, it's become a bit of a throwaway culture. When yeah. running shoes and that's terrible. There's also a bit of a concern if you have a very stiff shoe and it can't do that kind of flex. I don't even just mean going through your gait cycle. I also mean, kind of doing the, the twisting motion in your shoe. And, and the reason why that's so important is because if you're going to run over uneven terrain and there's just a little rock here, say it's like just on the outside of your foot for the people listening on the podcast. And if your shoe is a stiff plate, your whole foot will kind of go over your ankle. And um, whilst what could have happened is that you just locally adapting your foot, all those little metatarsal bones will just shift to the side a little bit and you just run over it. Um, if you get that, that rock just underneath your foot at the wrong spot, you just twist over your ankle. So it's going to put lots of pressure on your ankle and your knee joints. And it won't be very, yeah, I mean, for me, running uh, rolling over my ankles is a bit of an issue as a Dutchie running in a lake district. <laughs> But I wonder if the carbon plate maybe shoe for the trails at least has a place. Um, I've never run on American trails, but they say they're kind of buffed out trails easy. I wonder then maybe, yes, that there is a place for it, but definitely no. Even just where I was running yesterday was uh, the kind of Horsewort area. And, you know, it's not Great Gable and all that, but my goodness me, yeah, I just couldn't imagine it. I spent more time three points of contact from my bum gun <laughs> so where, where this carbon plate would come into play i really don't know. i suppose also biomechanically you want to be going through the foot and the whole foot to be working in order for all that uh, proprioception and for the calf for all your posterior chain to be working at the same time as well up the leg and if your foot is landing quite flat on the carbon plate all the time that's going to have a reaction up the muscles as well isn't it because they're not the calf and the soleus are not going to be working in the same way Way, are they because the foot is going to be landing like that so it's not going to be then going through I can imagine i would like to hear people's experience of running in a carbon trail shoe for a long distance that could end up with other issues going on yeah and i also think like you're not actually landing flat and where the yeah. plate yeah. will help you like I land sometimes on my toes, sometimes on my heel, sometimes on my midfoot. It just varies on what kind of terrain. Well, I also like climbing uphill with a carbon plate when you want to be, that shoe is actually wanting to bend loads. You're literally going up like that. Like I don't understand how the carbon plate would work anyway. It will be interesting to see how it uh, translates this summer season in racing, um, the sort of trainers of choice. I'm trying to think of any athletes to... Uh, who wear the, that kind of shoe? I suppose any North Face athlete. Another question that comes up quite often in social media is um, how long a shoe would last? And with the previous guests that we've had on, I was surprised that they were quite open about, let's say, a couple of hundred miles or 300 miles or whatever. What would you say from a, to the, the to shoes that we've talked about to manage people's aspirations? Are we looking at kind of three to 400 miles or does it totally depend on the train you, you run on? I think it depends on the terrain and it also depends on the runner. Um, I mean, some like there's different different bits where your shoe can wear out. It can either be, you know, your grip kind of goes um, quite like your cleats wear down. Therefore, there's not a lot of grip on there anymore. You can then maybe use your shoes quite happily on some less muddy terrain. Um, so just keep on using them. Other thing is like, you know, people say my midsole's dead. Um, yeah. that's what they often uh, refer to um, I think in most of our midsole materials they last a really long time we do some like lab aging and obviously a lot of wear testing and 
I, I don't normally see this go first, but it depends. Again, it depends on the runner. It depends on the temperature you run in, funny enough. Why does the temperature make a difference? Usually I see that like hotter temperatures, uh, softer material, more compression. Then you obviously have the upper. Sometimes you get some holes in your upper. I would say um, patch them up. There's lots of um, little videos online nowadays. I think you can use some KT tape and some elastic glue. Um, and that just makes your shoes last longer again. Is it a conscious thing to tr make the whole shoe wear out at the same time? I do see quite often uh, maybe the, the, the soles are fine, but somebody's, not your brand in particular, but just any brand that the, the, the uppers kind of give way before uh, the, the grip. Is, or do you design them to all wear out evenly? To be honest, I just try and make everything last as long as I can. Yeah. And sometimes we're more successful on one part than we are on another part. Um, and I like truly believe that if you love your shoes and they last you long, you're going to recommend them to your friends yeah. and that will help us with sales. What won't help us with sales is unhappy customers. So we just may try and make everything last as long as we can, because it's better for the planet. If you can make your shoes last twice as long, that's half of the amount of carbon, half of the amount of materials and half the amount of waste. It's just a simple equation, really. So like we're really investing a lot into making our shoes as durable as you can, but you can help yourself as well by looking after your shoes properly, making sure that you rinse them out after a run, especially this, yeah. if they got them boggy, because <clears throat> bog is acidic and the acidity kind of like eats away the materials. Um, ah, the okay. sand uh, that goes and sits in between the mesh, that kind of grinds away at it like sandpaper. Yeah. So you can just get like a two liter bottle of water in your car and just rinse them off. Or if you uh, if you get home just on the on the tap, um, dry them never, away from the Never wash the trainers, Gary. <laughs> yeah, I do. I wash the trainers more than I wash the cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm terrible because I have so many shoes. <laughs> I'm like the worst person here. Well, that's my but, next job after this Zoom call is to wash two pairs of trainers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I stand in the river at the end of a run a lot. I yeah, find that quite easy. That's and so um, don't dry them on the radiator or next to the fire. It's too hot. Yeah. It <gasps> will kill the glue and it makes them more crunchy. Right, I think exactly that's what I do is I put them on the... Oh, I've yeah. done that and my inner soles have gone all curly inside like a quiver. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> Why did I do that for? <laughs> yeah, that? yeah. I've, I've done it before, like in a like long distance, you know, run. And then in the evening, I'm trying to dry out my shoes. Yeah. So I'm going against all of my own advice and then the insults. <laughs> yeah, we do that. Don't worry, we do that all the time on the podcast. <laughs> Gary and I give out all this wisdom and then yeah. we're like, oh, yeah, no, but we don't do that. Um, um, but what is actually a good tip is take the insole out when you're drying because otherwise sometimes the water goes and sits underneath the insole. So take the insole out and dry it separately and it makes your shoes a lot less smelly as well. So it just That's nice. like, really That's helps. two things now. I didn't realize the bogs and the acidity wasn't great for your shoes. And now I'm going to take my insoles out. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, there, is, there, um, is there anything about wearing your shoes, like uh, for people that run every single day or some people, crazy people that run twice a day, that they should rotate their shoes because the cushioning um, becomes slightly impacted after each run and you should leave it to um, leave it for 24 hours. Is there anything like that with Innovate Trainers? Yes, it is best to, after a run to leave it for 24 hours so that it kind of like you have like compression within the run and then compression over time because you've done a lot of runs. So they've, they've kind of showed that lo most of the like EVAPU mix, most mix of materials, they have kind of re um, sort of like buffed up again after 24 hours. So it is always a good idea to rotate. And um, if you're if you're kind of thinking, oh, my midsole could use a little bit of a boost and uh, go and get some boomerang footbeds from our website because mm -hmm. they really give your feet. Like I've, I've seen people use them again and again, moving them across shoes. So with these, these are one we put, started putting shoes about two years ago. You can see there's, 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 little, there's little beads on the bottom. Okay. So they're just, they're just like an inner. Uh, yeah, what, what and there's thousands of them. And what they do is basically, sorry, I'm not good for the podcast, but I've got my fingers. <laughs> and I've got, they, 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 they compress, i put them there. They compress down all these thousands of beads that are on there and then they spring back like that. 
So every, every foot strike you get, you're getting that extra bounce and proportion through this. Plus, it's giving an element of cushioning as well. Yeah. And, and I don't these, ever these are, see these honestly, compressed. These, they are mega. They're really they're so good. Do you take out the inner from your trainer and replace it with that, or do you put it yeah. on? Yeah, that's, I, 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 any that don't have the boomerang footbed in, I am now switching out and putting oh, it so in. Oh, so there we are. This one's got a boomerang. Shoes. Yeah. So, so you can use that in any shoe that you have if you want. Okay, so I could use that. And then, so if I was running, I do often run twice a day. Yeah. So I would take that out and put a fresh one in for the second run if I only had one pair of trainers. Mm. No, for this one, you can keep on using that. I it's, can the keep it's the trainer you need to need to rotate and the, the insole, that can just keep going. It's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love it. I will take that out to dry now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the other thing when we we're talking about um, du you're talking about the durability and how long shoes should, shoes should last. It's probably worth pointing out about our use of graphene, um, which we started in 2018. And the idea of that is that graphene is the world's strongest material. You know, it makes the outsoles much stronger, but without losing any of that grip quality that we're renowned for. So, you know, the idea is that you know your shoes won't wear down as quickly. So you're going to get that amazing grip for longer. I'm putting numbers on it is really, really difficult, you know, and in yeah. testing, we have different people running different distances. I remember the first pair we had, one of our testers was over three, 1,300 kilometers in his shoes and he's still going. And, you know, so the, these shoes can last a hell of a long time, but I think you need to look after them as well. That is key as what Bordeaux was saying. You have to self care for your shoes. So many people, and I've, I've been guilty in the past, of just not looking after shoes. Yeah. And, you know, we all need to be more conscious of that. Um, so yeah, the use of graphene in the outsoles, and we also now use it in the in the midsole as well. So yeah. again, because it infuses all that strength and all that power that the, that the graphene has in there to make it last longer um, without using without losing any of the qualities of the foam. So the foam is really responsive, really bouncy, really really nicely cushioned, but it will last longer. So so many so many shoes out there in the market have an amazing foam in, but the more they compress, yeah. the, the you know they, they lose their powers of ability so quickly. Yeah, so you like and this, you, realize and you buy a new pair and you're like, oh my god, I've been running yeah. on like cardboard, but they don't last very long. <laughs> we want, we want people to have that amazing feeling in their shoes for longer. You know, if you've been, you know, you've done three hundred, two, three hundred miles in your shoes, you don't want to be putting on a pair and going, oh god, these feel these feel naff now. You want to be putting them on and thinking. Well, still feel great. These do, you know, got that spring, got that, you know, feeling good. You want to go out for your run, yeah. feeling like you're going to be bouncing. Um, and that's I wish I had that. You could buy that. <laughs> <laughs> if people are looking at investing in a pair of trainers, I think we should use the verb to invest in a pair of trainers rather than just to buy and use nowadays. So, um, your new trainer, the Park Claw, what sort of price are we looking at for that? Oh, but it doesn't need to be exact. For the new Parklaw G280, um, I think it's 160 pounds at retail at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's, I'm just, I'm, I'm just checking on my phone because. Uh... <laughs> it, it, it doesn't. I guess. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to hide the fact that I'm on the look. <laughs> no, I think that's lovely. Yeah. That is that that is that is 160. That is. I do know that that one is one two five. This is one two five. This across, is the, pack, the cross uh, channel the ultra, cross which was Damien Hall's trainer of choice for the, the spine. spine You're thinking right. of doing something. Yeah, one, one, one two five for that one. So really, really good price point on that. That's a pretty good price. Yeah, one two. It's good. Yeah, yeah. We really tried uh, to get a shoe that was. It's so it's not it's not got the graphene that some of the other shoes have got. So obviously when we when we use the graphene that increases the price because it's a, a technology which comes at a cost obviously to us yeah. um but what we've tried to do with that shoe is really make the cross tall and ultra is you know try and design a shoe that gives incredible performance and long lasting performance but uh, uh, at a price which you know is a little more favorable I and mean, did you want to say anything on that shoe no no like really we've had a really strict design brief on that one where like give people everything they need and nothing that they don't love yeah. it that this should be a motto for life Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> you Everything you need and nothing that you don't. Yeah, I love that. That's good. <laughs> That's the opposite of our podcast, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> uh and the Trail Fi Ultra, that was the other one that we've talked about. Yeah. Um, 
we'll just let you uh, keep chatting. I'm, 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 my, my phone is um, going a, a little slower. I've actually picked up the first one these weeks. There's two trail fly shoes. Yeah, there's two different yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah so, and is it purely just a uh, name change for that, or is there any new innovation in the product? Or? It was just a name change to kind of bring it in line with the sort of ultra running family. Um, so yeah, you, it's still it's still the the same the same shoe. This one is currently selling at 145 pounds. Okay. Yeah. And which one is that one? The DM? That is the Trailfly G270, and it's got graphene grip and Powerflow midsole, and it has the boomerang uh, footbed in there. Yeah. That's the one with the zero drop. Um, is the one with the zero that drop, one. yeah. And the ultra one? That, 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 that's 170. Yeah, so that has graphene grip, G-fly midsole, and the boomerang. Um, and it, it's 170 pounds at the moment. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's, yeah, I think that's something for everybody. You've got yeah, your road to trail, you've got your long stuff, you've got grippy stuff. Yeah, I think that's an awesome place to to wrap it up. Unless you guys have anything, anything else you want to share? Uh, no, I mean, we could sit and talk all day, couldn't we, about no, yeah. running? We, we just love to talk about running. So, you know, as I noticed in the background there, I can see your Bob Graham certificate. Oh, so, um, no! Yeah. <laughs> we are I spotted. wonder how that got in there. <laughs> oh, awkward, Gary. Oh, no, embarrassing. <laughs> again. I only know because I, 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 I have one in my back of my shot when I'm doing Zoom calls from home. I have mine in oh, as well. <laughs> show <laughs> off. <laughs> what, Wait, what, Lee, what trainer did you wear for your Bob Graham round? I wore... So I, mine, was, mine was 2016, so a bit a little bit ago, so we... The trains we've talked about here, a lot of them weren't in the range then. Um, I actually wore, and I'll get it, I'll get it, so I'll get it off the showroom raw. Oh, he's got it signed. <laughs> he's got it signed. <laughs> it's not, not, not in this, it's not in this, this is a new colour of it. So it's the, it's the cross, the cross Talon oh, 212. Classic. So it's a classic Innovate shoe, which has been in the range for, wow. Um, over 10 years. Yeah, way over 10 years, probably more like 15 years. Um, yeah, eight millimeter lugs on the bottom. I actually, but what what I would have done, I think if I was doing it again now, I think I might jump into the the ultra shoe because yeah. what I had to do was I did the first two legs, so when I got all the way to Dunmail Race, yeah. and I had to switch out my shoes into a a size half a size bigger, so the same shoe half a size bigger because my toes had were were against the end, they'd swelled over oh, the first wow. two legs. Yeah. And they were just catching on the ends. So, yeah. you know, having that bigger size helped me. Whereas I think with the ultra shoe, because it's got a wider toe box. Yeah. I could have probably just worn that throughout. Yeah, 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 which is huge, isn't it? Because it's asking a lot of people that are wanting to run like long distances, a lot of investment if you're then going to go, oh, I'm going to have to buy another pair half a size bigger for yeah. halfway round. Whereas it, it really, your toe box, if it's big enough, it should, unless, you know, your feet, they, you do, you know, people's feet can swell massively. But if you have got a trainer in which you can stay the course in, um, and you've sort of bedded your foot into anyway, and if it's comfortable, then you have to change. You don't really want, well, personally, I don't want to be changing. No, I don't want to be changing. I don't even want to take my shoes off halfway through. No, I think what's important when you're buying, though, is that, like, in the midfoot and in the heel, it feels nice and tight. And then in the, in the toe box, you get the space, because that's where it's going to be. You feel nothing, spelling. basically, don't you? And you basically, don't want, like... You don't want to feel anything. Just no, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you don't want to have a shoe that you're swimming in, like, a size too big, because you would be moving around in your yeah. shoe. And that's why I'm saying the midfoot needs to, like, hold your foot well. And then the toe box kind of like nice and wide for the really long distance stuff. There is still like obviously the sport of fell fell running. That's what I was going to say. There's still a, there's still a large place for, for shoes like this. You know, a more narrow fitting, yeah. you know, a narrow fitting shoe like a cross helm two on two because you know I do a lot of I've grown up on you know thirty years of fell running and you want you want a nice. A nice fit in the toe box it's quite tight because you're contouring on fells and you're going side to side and you can't you don't want to be you know you don't want a toe box where it's slip too slippy and yeah. um, you want to feel you know you want the shoe almost like to feel like it wraps right tight right around your toes and around your feet um so for shoe for fell running i'd see that shoe on cross country when we do the cross countries in the yeah. northeast we don't really do fells well down in yorkshire we can do but um yeah cross country season if it's not too muddy you see a lot of uh yeah, that type of shoe. Popular alternative to spikes, I guess, yeah. for, for cross country, just because it's got such fierce sort of rubber, rubber studs that like to dig in. So what what do you two? What are you two got coming up then for this year? Have you got any big, big adventures, big runs planned? You want to go? Oh, you've just done the um, lakes traverse. Haven't you? I just done lakes traverse like 
two weekends ago. I kind of want to do a long distance trail in the Netherlands where I'm from, but I'm not sure if I can do the flatness. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds really controversial, but like, I'm like, oh, it would just be, I would have to do so many miles and they're so flat. Um, but yeah, I would love to go home and kind of run run the coastline in the Netherlands. Do they do, uh, is, it, is the FKT spread to the Netherlands? Um, there has been some, but this specific path has none. So I call it an OKT, only no time. <laughs> email and buzz. Uh, email and buzz. Uh, actually, no, they've sold it. I don't know if FKT.com, it's, it's changed it? to someone else now. It's right, like, okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, you can't believe how, how rapidly that has grown. That, I know of quite a few, you know, we've got another exciting year planned with athletes and ambassadors. And um, I know they all like, it's really hard because they all like to keep it secret, so I can't say too much. But nope. do, do you follow the dots on the maps? Yeah, I love uh, it. You know, everyone ends up dot watching for like two to three days, watching people either run across Fully the Fully invested or... in people running around paths. <laughs> What I think is awesome with it, with you know, you see your athletes and your ambassadors trying to get records, but for people like myself, you know, I'm never going to get a Bob Graham round. Barry, you don't know, you don't know, it's like in the old dog yet. But it's just opened up um, my eyes to doing these adventures. With, with, there's been loads of Wayne rides going on. Um, mm. James, just uh, the other week, I think you've got the worst week of weather possible. <laughs> oh, poor Jay. Uh, honestly. <laughs> I know. I, I went out, I went on oh, holidays in New York with the sunshine. Oh, James was running around in the blowing wind and rain. Huge oh, kudos, oh. though. I loved that he carried on. I love uh, that he carried on. He didn't on. have to. He didn't have to prove anything to anyone. Uh, he, you know, he went around it. He'd already been around it in winter to become the first person to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it was only five, four or five months since he yeah. went round it in winter to have another go. And he's a super strong and like mentally, mentally strong guy, and that which yeah. is such a huge part of a, a challenge like that. You know, you look at people like Paul Tierney and Sabrina, very, very strong physically and mentally. And yeah. I think you need that to do to do the way and rights. You know, it's it's an epic undertaking. Especially to when that. he's done it before, he knows mm. exactly the task and then when the weather yeah. he faced he mm. can't hide you know it's not like they often say with the marathon the marathon will always find you out and uh yeah he knows exactly what was ahead of him but just him doing stuff like that we've had a few guests on doing Wayne Wright obviously Steve Birkinshaw yeah. and it's just inspired me I, I've got this like mini mini project just to go and tick them off and um mm. just get me out of these new fells that I'd never been to before I think I've, yeah no I've, I've done them all as well yeah I've lived well I've lived in the lakes all my life so I actually, I actually got in trouble with some people because <laughs> These, so I collected them a long, long time ago, and I collected a little stone off the top of each one. Ooh. And um, I, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> and, but this was, yeah, this was years ago, and I, I built a little cairn in my spare bedroom, the sad little man that I am. And um, I put a picture on Twitter, and this was a while ago, and yeah, I received quite a bit of abuse for it. And Aww. what I've said now is, me and my wife, we've got, a, we've got our first little boy who's three years old now, and I'm gonna, all the stones are labelled, so I'm going to take them back with him and he's going to put them all back in exactly the same place where they came from. And so That's he's doing the way and rights at the same time. So it's a nice, a nice story. Lovely story. Well, Lee, have you got anything planned this year? Um, I've entered quite a lot of, so I say I come from a background of felling. My dad, my brother, my wife, mum, they're all felloners. So um, I would try to try and get in some of the, um, the British and English Championship fell races. And there's some classic fell races, which I still have on my list to do. So things like, um, which one haven't I done? Oh, the Wasdale, the Wasdale fell race, which is about 23 miles, I think, and takes in all the highest peaks around. It's just really, although I love ultra running, I love trail running, I love all the razzmatazz, I go to UTMB every year, I love all that. There's yeah. a part of me that still loves low-key fell running, where you pay five pounds, pay on the day, yeah. You just turn up, you run with your friends, you know, you are competitive, but you're competitive in yourself. Yeah. you get back, you have a cup of tea and a pint and a bit of cake and, and, and go home. It's, I don't know, I, there's still a bit of me that just loves that low-key element of things. Have you raised the old county tops before? I have done the old county tops. I did it in the year I did the Bob Graham, actually, so 2016. Yeah, I did it with a, a friend and that's an amazing day out. I recommend that to anybody and just getting to run with run with a partner and run with a yeah. friend around it and you have to cajole each other around it's um and you're taking all those summits and the, the routes that you take you're off paths and it's just amazing i remember the climb out of cockley beck to coniston 
I've never ever you. done that way up there before. And it was yeah. like, what the hell? And, and, and then you went all the way out to Conniston Old Man to then come back on yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I just filled up on about five egg mayonnaise sandwiches at the checkpoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. What about Three Peaks, Lee? Are you going for that this year? I've not, no. Do you know what? I've never actually raced Three Peaks. It's not a type of runner I am. I love I love to <laughs> I love to have a good walk. I like to yeah, it's a bit of a joke with my friends and stuff. We, we, you know, they say I'm a good walker, not a runner. So um three peaks is a very it's a very runnable route, you know, it's marathon distance. Mm. Um I know I know I know you put in three big tops, but apart from you know the steep climb at Wernside, it's it's, it's largely really runnable. It's, it's largely yeah. runnable. The big section between Penny Ghent and Wernside is you know, fast running. It just doesn't really suit me. And no, maybe I'm just making up excuses here for not doing it. Because in a way, it's it. I should be doing it. This year, though, it's only it's actually on in uh, 30th of April. So, yeah. and the field looks amazing. Yeah. So I think it's a qualifier for the yeah, Great British, Britain yeah. team. British. And yeah, it's stacked. You know, some really top guys and, and ladies on the start line. So, looking forward to watching that. It'd be, it'd be a really good race. So. Oh well, thank you so much. Thank you so much to both of you for giving up your time. Always learn. Oh, I've learned difficult. stuff today. I've learned so much stuff today. I've made notes. <laughs> I'm gonna wash my trainers. I'm gonna <laughs> Don't put them on the radiator. No, I'm like, oh, that's so bad. I want like I do it with the kids ones too, and I'm like, <laughs> why do they always fall apart? I want to wash. I'm gonna dry. I'm gonna take the insoles out. Uh, and I also, I like before I was a little bit, I won't lie, I'm a, was a bit confused to find as all the names quite confusing and the numbers and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I feel educated now. I feel much better to go and uh, hopefully everybody else's. If people have questions and they're not sure still, what's their best way to um, to find out more? Is it to try and pop in to see you? Uh, have you got details on your web page? Yeah, there's, there's various ways. Obviously, we're at, I say we're at retailers throughout the country. We have a page on our website, which are, you can find a retailer. So that's a good way to start. And um, we obviously have the shop in Staveley in the Lake District next door, which is staff with experience, innovate um, staff. So good place to come resource. And the website's got loads of information on it as well. And um, we have a contact form on there, which will take you directly through to our customer service team. There again, I think we've got three, four dedicated customer service people, all of whom, are, all of whom are trail runners. So send them, uh, send them um, some questions. Yeah. And if they don't know, they always come to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's a small business, you know, like they, we will try and help everyone who's trying to look for a pair of their perfect yeah. trainers. Yep. Thank you so much. Good luck with future well, endeavors you. and with your new uh, ranges this year. And we will be following, I think we've got a couple of innovate athletes coming on this year. And uh, so we'll be following their various adventures as well. So oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for having us. Thank you. No okay. Take, take care. care. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Thank you so much, Innovate Crew, for coming on the podcast. We learned we need to wash our trainers. Uh, we were both like, oh, never wash our trainers. So My much. shoe maintenance. If there's, if there's water there after a run, they get a, they get a rinse. It's so dry here at the moment. My shoes are just like dusty. Like my hands, when I finished running yesterday, were just like covered in dust from uh, just <sighs> dust from the rocks. Anyway, anyway, but uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. If you're looking for a really grippy, I mean, a shoe absolutely designed for Bob Graham's fell running, I find them not quite cushioned enough. Um, I, but I love the grip on them. So definitely something for, for me for shorter runs. But you love them, don't you, Gary? You wear them. Yeah, big long-term fan. Uh, the Terra Ultra, I think they're the trail fly now, the 260 or 270. I think Damien Hall kind of made them famous on his various FKTs that he did. They're a super good shoe, really. I think I've had three pairs of them. And anecdotally, because oh, I'm a bit of a footwear geek, um, lots of innovative footwear over at the Durham Dales at the weekend. Easily the most popular brand. Oh, really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Right, what's coming up? Yeah, I've got some. Uh, stuff. We've got a few. I, I thought I'd give um, the local event close to me called the Muddy Roads. They are taking over the Sedgefield Serpentine Trail Race this year. And it's oh, September and it starts to finish at Sedgefield Cricket Club. So it's such a lovely venue for the sunny day. There's a bar there. You can get some nice on draft San Miguel. And there's an £80 prize 
for the winners. So yeah, if you fancy that, um, be doing the prize given. Oh yeah, could be a guy from the guy from the podcast teach. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, the the event sponsors like to do all that. Uh, yeah, head over to <laughs> like www. Yeah, <laughs> head over to www.muddyroads.co.uk and check them out if you fancy that. Run around Sedgefield in the local area; it's really good. And another race that I saw, Eddie's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> this is the passport office. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then it's like, well, it's a category A slash S fell race, three hundred twenty-three meters. Of elevation, Did starting at Shaw Methodist Church, climbing to the tree point on Cropton Moor before descending to the quarries near Buckstone Road. Oh, yeah, 320. So that's pretty spicy for over here. Um, that's good. And that's next on uh, 29th of June. So Wednesday. Wow. Oh, nice. Pop on over to Eddie's Revenge. Then we've got the Mulvern down south, almost in Wales. Maybe it goes into Wales a bit. Midsummer Marathon. Oh, Saturday 25th. Oh, this looks a good one. 4,800 feet of ascent, ascent on tracks and paths, including all the Mulvern Hills. Love the Mulvern Hills. 26 Beautiful, mile uh, route. You've got the Black Hill to End Hills. You've got the Cradley, Oyster Hill, Ledbury. Gosh, it's everywhere. Um, and the main ridge from British Camp. Oh, yeah, there is like there's an old British Army camp, isn't there? Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you're looking for a, uh, a really good one for a, well, it's your A race, but also if you're looking for some climbing. Uh, well, I've just looked at the elevation and distance. I should be doing this for my Lake 100 ratio. You should be doing this one. 26 miles, 5,000 feet. Bit of that a drive is. for you, but oh, okay. uh, yeah. probably worth the effort. Um, so if you're anywhere around southwest, it's a race for you. Right, what you got coming up, Gaza? Wow. Oh, well, I think um, it must be a bit of a down week, actually. I've looked at the schedule on Garmin. Where are we now? Are we um, six weeks six... out? Just under six weeks, I suppose now. So on my planner last week, it was because I just basically follow a, a, a half marathon plan. Uh, uh, sorry, a full a marathon plan, and the workout, the long run for last week was to race a half marathon. See where you're at. So this week is a bit of a uh, down week so it's pretty much lots of easy running apart from thursday but thursday's a bit thursday, i'm not really looking forward to thursday it's 15 minutes <clears throat> it's the classic you know the 10 minutes and five times one k and then 10 minutes well this is basically replaced the 10 minutes with 15 minutes so that's a pretty wowzers so if you say, say doing four minute k's there's 20 minutes and then you've got half an hour of the other exercise you got 50 minutes of graft which is uh big big that's too big for me i can only do about half an hour of grafting in I, a might go to flats. I might go down to hartlepool if it's not windy i might head down the flats and just see what the legs are capable of love it yeah. eight minute miles see uh <laughs> well the trails are great but you know you can kind of hide behind the hills can't you see? oh yeah i've been doing that for years <laughs> you can get this to be a seven minute mark like, oh. well, maybe i'll come away feeling a bit more miserable about where i'm at <laughs> i don't know you're doing, you're doing great it's all good it's all different build up maybe but it's all good still yeah. running yeah, you know what? I this is it. I think if on average I've averaged out easily over ten thousand feet a week, I've been really super consistent with my strength and conditioning. Eighty and miles a week, pretty right. much. That's huge, Gary. Yeah. People will be like spitting on you in this podcast, listening to this, yeah. going, "He's whining." You're greedy, don't you? You always want a little bit more. Well, that's, that's what happens to both of us, isn't it? It's yeah. too greedy. I'm going to get really greedy this week because okay. um, <clears throat> next week the oldest secondary school finishes next week. What is it, 28th of June? Can you imagine that? Oh, my God. Yeah. And I've got him for nine weeks. Love him. So I'm going to be a bit greedy this week. I'm going to do some more long runs. I'm going to get out on my bike. I'm just going to... I think the heat wave is good. I think this is the last day. It's definitely cloudy today. There's clouds. There's clouds. And I'm not going to... Oh, I... <laughs> I mean, because like running is okay because you can temper your effort, but biking, oh my God, I thought my head was going to explode because oh, wow. you just can't get away from the heat. Um, so, but I am going to be a bit greedy this week because from next week, that's it then. I've got the kids for 10 weeks, yeah. 10 weeks on a day. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous <laughs> that I have to look after my own children. Anyway, we have lots of fun stuff, but planned and it's actually super lovely here in the summer summer holidays are great we've got these massive like alpine lakes oh, we've got look outdoor, fantastic. That yeah we've got outdoor pools we've got the mountain bike trails we don't have to you never have to be like what we're going to do today because you can literally just go and sit somewhere and uh, we have shopping trolleys now a little bit of open water where we live 
And I think Vauxhall Nova was in the river way when that was loaded the other day. <laughs> I, my, I mean, my kids will be delighted with that. Sort of fridges. Thing. <laughs> fridges, trolley. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep going. I've got to get, I only did two gym sessions last week, Gary. I slacked a bit. So hard um, fitting in the gym. So I'm literally, when we finish this, I've got to get down there. I do find the, the gym less appealing in the summer. I'm like... Mm finding that i'm like you could go and run that beautiful alpine ridge yeah or you could go to a dungeon and squat weight where you're all by yourself <laughs> and make inappropriate noises and like, like oh i want to go there but i know and anyway so maybe got to keep keeping that and the gym yeah, people are focused. lovely and i was like can i what could i like i was like we need can i what can i do in the summer because i've got the kids and that means that it's really tricky for me to get to the gym and they're like, oh, I just bring them and they can just sit up sticking you know, and play outside and there's a cafe upstairs. So I was like, you're going to regret that, but I'm going to so do that. Bingo. Bingo. Anyway, so nice to chat to you. That was episode 95. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh, we are a little short on five-star reviews. Like, I share, guess, subscribe. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Get up there. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you to Cheer Charge for continuing to support the show, sending bars to guest competition winners, and keeping us all fueled in our adventures and generally being a super all round amazing company. Uh, good luck to everybody training, especially if you're heading towards hurtling towards Lake 100, like Gary. I'm Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwaites. And let's run to the hills. Mm-hmm.